Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sam's Motor Machine. In this episode, I want to show you guys my amazing new lawn furniture that I've just got. Fully weatherproof, leather, stylish, very comfortable, and even comes with electric windows and heated seats. Obviously, what this means is it's time for me to take the tired interior out of the Range Rover and replace it with these nice, good used ones. Let's get started. So you guys will remember from earlier videos that although I've done a few bits of work to the interior of this car, like the steering wheel, fairly even finished now, but let's say another couple of coats. I've got nothing better to do, so I might as well just do a few more coats. Um, the interior really still is the main thing that lets this car down. So I know the car's done 190,000 miles, 193,000 now actually, but this driver's seat is unbelievably bad. There's huge chunks of foam missing out of it. There's obviously a massive chunk of leather missing there. Um, it's extremely well worn. Even the driver's bolster is, uh, it's got a hole in it here and a lot of wear on it. Um, and just generally it's pretty stained all over and it's well past its best. The passenger seat's nowhere near as bad, but we're gonna change it out anyway, just so that the, uh, the front two match and they're uh, of a similar age. Um, the rears, I'm not sure yet whether they need to be replaced or not because um, they're pretty much immaculate. So we'll see what the sort of color match looks like when I get the fronts in. And if there's any obvious difference, we'll switch them over. The other thing you'll have seen from the intro is I've got some door cards for this. Now the keen eyed amongst you will notice door cards on this car are ivory in color. The ones I've got to go on are black. So yeah, although it's not technically the right color for the interior, I think it'll work pretty well and it'll, it'll match our black trim and the black carpets and everything like that. Um, the other thing about changing to a black door card is that I won't get this issue of the door card constantly looking dirty. So in my job, I'm partially workshop based. So that means when I leave work, sometimes my hands and arms aren't always perfectly clean. So it doesn't take long before the door cards start to really look mucky. So I'm hoping with the black ones that will alleviate that problem a bit. Also, these door cards are really worn out as well. This, this door pull it looks horrible. It's, uh, the leather's completely worn out on it. So yeah, it'd be good to get rid of these and try these on. So we're going to start off with the driver's seat, which is held in with these E-Torx bolts. Um, E12 is the exact number. Um, so we're just going to take out the front bolts and then we'll be able to move it forwards and take out the rear bolts. It's going to be interesting to see what we find underneath these seats, because I bet they've never been out since it was new. That's a meaty bolt. Okay, that's both front bolts out. Next thing we're going to do is power the seat forward and then get those rear bolts out. Okay, it's both of those out. So before I tilt the seat back and unplug all the electrics, what I'm going to do first is tilt the seat far forward as I can just to make it as compact as possible to get it in and out of the door aperture because it can be a bit tight sometimes on these cars. We'll probably also want to lift the steering wheel up as high as it will go. We'll also bring the headrest down as well just to make it as small as possible. Can we make this? Yeah, let's get this down as well. Let's lower it right down. Okay, I think that's as small as she's going to go. Okay, now we can get underneath. There's three multi-plugs under here from what I remember. Actually, no, there's four. I've added another one. So just so you guys can see what it's like when you tilt the seat back. Um, obviously there's a load of muck under there. But there's this one big harness that runs underneath the seat. And then you've got one, two, three, four big multi-plugs to undo um, in order to detach the seat. So that's those four connectors disconnected. Now's the fun part of lifting the seat out. One more thing we've got to do guys, just realized. Of course, you've got to take the seatbelt off. And the seatbelt is a big T50 Torx this time. Okay, should be fully, deta fully detached now. And hernia in three, two, one. Too bad actually. 
and some cars have had the, the door aperture is barely big enough to get the seat out of. I guess the Range Rover, being designed for big fat businessmen, has big fat doors as well. As you guys may remember from a previous video, another issue I've got with the Range Rover is the rain sensor and the headlight sensor aren't working. Um, I tried to replace the sensor, didn't do anything. With the help of the Range Rover Owners Club uh, on Facebook, um, the issue apparently lies under this carpet on the driver's side footwell. Um, apparently there's some canvas wires that are spliced under this footwell and over time they become detached and you lose the functionality of your rain sensor. So I've just pulled out this rather lovely sill plate. Gonna get the carpet up, have a look, see what we can find. Next, I'm gonna get the accelerator pedal out so we can get the carpet up. Yep, that seems like it. So we get some tools out of the way and we should be able to pull the carpet back a fair bit now. So that's the carpet up, I'm gonna give that a bit of a hoover and then we're gonna get that plastic, white plastic panel up and that's where our wiring fault should lie. All right, let's get that floor panel up. Torx T20s, I believe, little plastic fixings. Oops. Where did that go? Okay, that's that out of there. Right, more stuff to hoover up. Now you guys can see that big bundle of wires that runs under the driver's footwell. So somewhere in here, and I'll need to unwrap this, uh, this loom tape they've got around it. Um, somewhere in here there will be some green wires, twisted wires, I think it's a twisted pair. Um, so somewhere down here there's going to be a splice and hopefully we'll see that it's come apart. I should say, not going to be the easiest task for somebody with red-green colour blindness, but we'll see what happens. We'll start off with that and see what we can see. Just start separating this out. So it didn't take much digging guys, but I believe I've found the source of the issue. These three red green wires, and I know they're red and green because I just had to ask my mate by sending him a picture, should be connected. In theory, if we connect them back up again, to all together, we should get, our, get all of our functions back again. Just gotta figure out how to connect them now. So it was actually four wires in the end that needed connecting. There's another one that comes from another direction. Um, I just got my mate to crimp them together for me nicely and then wrap a bit of insulation tape around it and it's good as new. The big question now though guys is are those automatic wipers gonna work after the wiring fix? Is there any one way to find out? Oh yes. That's awesome. So good. I mean, automatic wipers you get on pretty much everything these days, but when you haven't got it, you really know about it. Turn the wiper speeds up and down. So, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm really glad that fix worked. Next thing I'm going to tackle is changing this door card. We're going to chuck one of the black autobiography ones on, see what it looks like. To be honest, I'm putting it on regardless of what it looks like, but I personally think it's going to look pretty good. So, we'll give it a go. That's the first one. Second one hides behind this Land Rover badge, which is a bigger Torx. There's another screw down here. And a fourth one here. These like they like using lots of different sizes of fixings for some reason. Orange spudger tools, doing work again. These things are awesome. Let's unplug a few switches. Speakers. Let's 
and the lights. And there we go. So yeah, that's what we got inside the door of a Range Rover L322, guys. There's your weather seal. This is the pull for the door handle. Door controller unit. Bop, big bottom speaker. That's the wiring for the uh, little light you've got at the bottom of the door. Switches, speaker. Not too bad. And here is its replacement. So we're gonna try and do the same in reverse. A little wire on the bottom for the, the light. Okay, so let's tilt her back, like that, unplug everything. Off we go. I reckon these seats are probably about 50 kilos each. Ridiculous. So this is the original one, this is the new one. There's not much, as much of a difference in these as there was with the driver's seat. Because um, my passenger seat was in pretty good condition anyway. But I thought I'd change it anyway, because in case there is a slight uh, colour difference in the leather between this pair of seats and my original pair, I didn't want it to be too obvious between the, the two front seats. So we're going to switch them over. So the passenger front door card, the new one, has picked up a couple of scratches on the switch panel whilst it's been in transport, so it's not no big surprise, but to remedy that, all I'm going to do is I've just taken off the one from the original original door card, which is in better condition, and I'm going to swap it over, so the best of both worlds. Just four little torque screws that hold this on. So 
the scratched one. That's the non-scratched one. There we go. That's better. Still not perfect, but it's better than the original one was. There's a big clip that you have to push on in the, right in the centre of the door. Just like that. Looks good. These are a nice little finishing touch. Bit of an upgrade from the plain white plastic ones anyway. Nice. Guys, I hope it's coming across on the camera, but I can't tell you how much nicer these look in person. The fact that we've got the autobiography trim, it's lovely wood grain in here, and also, it's fully stitched all the way around as well. It's got leather leather stitching across the whole surface of the door rather than uh, plastic in these parts. It's like a huge upgrade. Also, I really like these, these chrome accent trims around the doors, a bit more classy. So for the rear seats, even easier, just two bolts there and then there's two more on the front edge of the seat base. So I'm gonna whip these out now, get them switched over. One last job to do is to replace the centre cubby box lid uh, with one that James supplied me as well. Um, you see mine isn't in the best shape, it's a bit worn out from all, those, from all those arms and elbows on them. And the one James has given me with this interior kit is uh, yeah, a lot better. So we're going to get that switched over now and see what it looks like. With these lids it's as easy as taking out these six torque screws and then the top part of the lid will come off and we can replace it. Yeah, so we'll get that gas strut off now. Old, new. Should make a nice little improvement to the interior. Sweet. Look at that. Lovely jubbly. That looks way nicer. I feel like just that on its own is taking like 50,000 miles off the look of the truck on the interior. Sweet. I can't tell you guys how much nicer it looks and feels when you open the door to get into this thing. Not to be greeted with that massive hole in the seat is such a big bonus. And just the general look of the door cards when you open it. This, this door card, the driver's door card, really lets it down when you open the door. That big worn out mark on the handle, and it was all chewed up around the bottom here. Yeah, super happy. It looks like a different car when you get into it. Wow. So yeah, hopefully that comes across in the video to you guys how much of an improvement it really is. It's really made to the interior of this car. 
it honestly feels like I've stepped into a totally different vehicle by by doing this. Um, it just feels like it shaved it shaved like a hundred thousand miles off of the uh, off of the odometer just instantly like that. So happy with it. The feel of the driver's seat is actually even better. Like the, the seat base is more supportive. I'm not leaning over like I was on the other seat. Um, the driver's door card isn't all collapsed down, so I've actually got a decent elbow rest for for the first time in this car. Um, it even smells nicer in here so uh, it's just yeah improvement all around so i've got to say a big thank you to one of my subscribers james smith who offered me all this stuff because james actually bought a full autobiography interior and fitted the autobiography seats to his car so these are his old seats um but he didn't fit the door cards he kept his original door his original door cards um because he wasn't sure whether the black would actually match with the ivory of the rest of the interior. I took a bit of a chance buying those black autobiography door cards, but I think that they actually match the interior really well. There's enough black trim and black leather around. Piano black wood trim that we've got and the black leather on top of the dashboard and the black uh, carpeting we've got throughout. I think it matches with the black leather on the door cards really well. Um, I'm really pleased that it came out. Um, and it actually makes a really nice contrast between the white of the seats and the black of the door cards. I'm not sure if this is actually a colour combination that Land Rover would have specified when it was new, um, but I don't see why not because to my eye it seems to certainly work pretty well. So yeah, over the moon with this upgrade guys, uh, I've been waiting to do it for ages and it's been well worth the wait. Secondly, that wiring fix we did on the under the carpet actually worked. The rain sensor is now working and also the headlight sensor is working, um, which is fantastic. We've got full functionality back of the vehicle now. Um, so in the end I didn't need to replace that sensor but to be honest it's quite good that I have because the adhesive is nice and new now and fresh and clear so it should be good for a long time yet. So yeah, all in all a pretty successful afternoon's work on the Range Rover. The treats for the Range Rover are far from over though. In the next couple of weeks we've got a full paint rest restoration that I'm going to do with my brother. Um, we're going to go over the whole car with a cut and polish and really really bring out that black paint work so it's like, like a mirror and that will really transform the exterior of this car because uh, the paintwork suffered quite a bit over the last 10 years, I think. And then next week, I'm actually booked in to have the transmission serviced on this car. A guy, a mobile guy is going to come around with his van and we're going to do a mega flush on the transmission. And I'm going to video the whole thing for you guys so you'll see the entire process. So hopefully that'll be a nice interesting video for you guys and hopefully it'll help our transmission last a bit longer and smooth, shift nice and smoothly. So yeah, the treats for the Range Rover are far from over. We've got loads more to come. I'm definitely going to be smiling a little more though every time I get into the Range Rover because of this nice fresh interior we've got. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you on the next video.